Hi, God bless you. Jesus loves you. If you have children or if you look after children, Jesus loves you all. Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them because the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. So what does it mean when parents or people who look after children, when they, when they say to children that God isn't real, that Jesus isn't real, so they deny they deny the existence of our Father in heaven. They deny the existence of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. What does it mean? Well, I just want to share something from personal, a kind of little personal story. So it was probably, probably about two weeks ago. And I did a, I did a live video I can't, I can't just remember which live video it was. I was just sharing the truth. For a lot of people, um, when I share messages on Facebook and I'm just sharing the truth, it can, be, it can be very much an uncomfortable truth for people. An uncomfortable truth for people to face into because it's what's happening is with the messages that I share sometimes, it can be convicting them. And that conviction comes through the Holy Spirit. Because when you shine light onto darkness, when you shine light onto sin, when you sun, shine light onto self-centered living, when you shine light onto situations and circumstances when people aren't taking responsibility, they are getting the conviction. They are getting the conviction, but then how people react with that conviction, it can be one of five things typically, which I've shared on a, on a video uh, just a day or two ago. That there's five ways of when, when you have done wrong, when you've done wrong, but there are five, usually from experience, there are five ways that you, can, that you can respond to that. The first of the five ways is just denying, completely denying that you have done anything wrong. So you're just living in total denial. So you're not in any way taking responsibility. The second way forward is to, is to blame someone else or to blame circumstances or situations, to blame someone else for the, for the decision you made or the decision that you continue to make. So basically you are, you are passing the book. You aren't taking responsibility. You are blaming, you are blaming someone else or other people or other circumstances. Maybe you're blaming your life experiences, your life circumstances. So you're not taking responsibility. So that is the second of the five ways of, of how you may how you may respond to when you have done something that, that, is, that is sin, when you have sinned, when you've done something against the will of God. Thirdly, people could choose to apologize, to say sorry for what they have done, but then to not really mean it. And they're just saying it just because you want it to go away. So it's not sincere, it's not from their heart and it's potential that they've said sorry, but they may continue to do whatever it was they've just apologized for. So that's the third kind of way forward. This is from personal experiences. The fourth way, is to say sorry and to genuinely and sincerely mean that you are sorry for what you have said or what you have done or your actions or behaviors that have potentially caused harm to someone else or to more than one person. So that is where you truly, you truly do want to, you, you truly want that other person or those people to know that you have no intention of doing that again, that you are sincerely sorry, that you realize the errors of your ways. So you take, you've taken full ownership, full responsibility of what you've done. You've not blamed anyone else. You've taken full responsibility for your actions and you've asked sincerely for, to be forgiven by the other person. And potentially you've been forgiven by that person or potentially not. The fifth way of responding to or, or dealing with or reacting when, when you've done wrong, when we, when we have sinned, is to do is to not only take total and utter responsibility and to be truly sorry for what you have done, but also it's to, it's to bring it to our Father and to say, Father, please forgive me for I have sinned. Forgive me for what I have done. Because there is a spiritual dimension to when we do things wrong, when we say things wrong, there is a spiritual dimension to it because our words and actions are powerful. Our words and actions, if they are negative, they give the enemy, Satan, in the spiritual realm, a legal right over us. So, But when we take it to God and we ask for his forgiveness in the name of Jesus and by the blood of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, our sins are forgiven when we truly repent to our Father in heaven. So they're the five ways that people can react and respond to when they have done wrong all the way through from being denial, being in total denial of, of doing something wrong, all the way through to asking our Father in heaven for forgiveness. But 
So what does it mean? So if as parents, or people, or like it could be parents, it could be carers of children, or it could be grandparents who, who have no faith, who are still currently blinded by the God of this world, who think that God isn't real, Jesus isn't real, and that they maybe see themselves as atheist. What does it mean if they say to their children or their grandchildren or the children that, they're, that are in their company, what if they say to their, to, what if they say to children that God isn't real, that Jesus isn't real? What if they deny the existence of God and they deny the truth of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who we are, who the world is just about to be on the verge of what should be celebrating the birth of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ? So what does it mean? Because, well, what, what's actually happening there and what happened about two weeks ago after I did a Facebook Live, there was a sister in Christ who commented on the post and, and this sister in Christ shared with me that I think it was her dad, so her child's granddad, has been speaking to his grandson and telling his grandson that your, that your mum has been brainwashed and that like God isn't real and that Jesus isn't real. So a grandparent, a grandparent was trying to take away their grandson or their granddaughter away from the truth, the truth of Jesus. Of course, that could happen. That may, that may have happened in your family, in your family circumstances with your children or the children that are in your care, where, where someone has either directly to children or with, in earshot of children have said to children or said to maybe another adult that God isn't real, that Jesus isn't real. This, you, may, you may have a situation, a circumstance, or there may be a few circumstances where you can relate to this because you have experienced this or you've heard this or you're aware of this. Well, for, our, for an adult, for an adult to cause a child. All right, thank you. For an adult to cause a child to fall into sin and to sin because that child has been told that God isn't real, that Jesus isn't real and that you shouldn't pray and that you just, and you can just do whatever you're led to do. Well, Jesus in Mark 9 verse 42 said, but if you cause one of these little ones who trusts in me to fall into sin, it would be better for you to be thrown into the sea with a large millstone hung around your neck. I just pray now, I just pray for the parents, the grandparents, the carers, the teachers, everyone that looks after children in any way. Father, I just ask that you lift the veil, that the scales fall from their eyes if they haven't been sharing with the children in their care about the truth of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, our Lord and Saviour, the light of the world. Father, I just ask you to set the captives free. Set the captives free in the name of Jesus. I declare and decree everyone that has been watching this live or that will watch this live, even just for a few seconds, Father, I declare and decree that you have chosen them to be free and who the sun sets free is free indeed. I ask you, Father, to lift the veil for the scales to fall from their eyes. Father, to give them an encounter with Jesus, Father. Father, through your Holy Spirit, to convict them if they haven't already been convicted of their sins, Father. Convict them of their sins. If they have children, if they have children that they look after in any way, Father, may you convict them for them to realise, to take responsibility of, their, of what they have done, what they have said, and when they have tried to keep the children in their care separated from the truth about Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth and the life. Father, I thank you. I praise you. I give you all the glory, praise and honour. Father, I just pray for everyone. I pray for everyone. I ask you to bless everyone, Father. Bless everyone. Bless everyone that is watching, listening, that will watch and listen to this. Just bless them all, Father. Bless all the children. I ask for a hedge of divine protection around all children. 
all the, all the children, all the families of the people listening to these words, Father, I just ask you for your, for your Holy Spirit to come upon every single person. And so tomorrow, on the day that the world should be celebrating the birth of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, for whichever day Jesus Christ was actually born on, Father, but we should, the, the reason for this season is the celebration of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, born of the Virgin Mary who lived a sinless life, who lived in a body that we sinners have, yet he committed no sin. Jesus Christ, who suffered a horrendous crucifixion and was nailed to the cross at Calvary for me and for every single person on earth, every single person listening and watching this, for our sins, because we have all sinned. We have all fallen short of the glory of God. Sorry, the... can we settle up so that I can close down? Okay, yeah, yeah thank, thank you, you. thank you. Glory, 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 hallelujah. God bless you. Jesus loves you all. Jesus is Lord. Jesus Christ is the King of kings, the Lord of lords. He is on the throne. You have been chosen to be free and who the sun sets free is free indeed. Agape Paul.